Hey guys, so in a previous video, we were showing you our new 242 XJ transfer case skid plate. So this is the 242 that we used for that install. Some people might have been thinking we were going to use a 242 for the XJ build, but spoiler alert, today is finally the day. We get to show you guys our final transfer case that's going to be going in the XJ project. We got a two-speed Atlas. This is a 4.3 to 1 gear reduction case. Uh, we did start doing some test fitting because it was going to be some clearance issues and whatnot, but uh, get it up there. We got to get it rotated. We did start a little bit of assembly on it, but our next step is we're going to get it installed, actually bolted in so that we can tear apart the OE transfer case um, shifter levers or lever, single lever, um, so that we can cut out our floor and get our new two handle installed. So we're going to drop this thing down to the ground, get into the cab, which our cab is pretty much gutted. Seats are out, center console's out. We had to peel the carpet back for when we were doing the uh, rock sliders. Um, so we're going to get that shifter assembly out before we stick the transfer case in. So if we got to get underneath and cut some bolts, it's nice and easy to get to. Spinner, 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 spinner. <sighs> Typical Jeep thing, all the nut inserts are spinning free inside the body. So let's see if we can start fire. So we're not going to waste our time. We're not asking, we're cutting. All bolts are cut-ish. Come right out. There's our hole. I'll have to nip them off. They might get cut out when we have to cut out our, our handle hole. We'll find out. So we're ready to install it. Not for the final time, but we got our transfer case shifter hole open so that we can install this, drop our doubler arms in, get them attached, make sure we have the clearance we need for the new boot. Um, but I want to talk about, this is the AW4 XJ automatic adapter plate from uh, Advanced Adapters for the Atlas. So basically these are clocked one way, so you gotta rotate this till all your mounting holes line up, get that installed, and then we didn't put any studs in what we did is we dry fit it with no studs, got it splined in there. We had a couple marks on the transfer case lined up so we knew when these holes were gonna be lined up. And then you can see on the edge here, we marked the edge and then we just found the closest hole that we could, knowing that's gonna be as close to flat as we could get it. Um, we we're pretty close, but we did have to make a couple little adjustments here with a BFH, so. Couple little floor clearance spots. We should be good to go. We're gonna slap this thing in real quick, get a dry fit, get our arms attached, make sure all that clears before we finally bolt it in. Should be about there. Pretty close. Are all of our studs lining up with a hole? So we're having a bit of a fitment issue into the back of our transfer case. So we're gonna uninstall our adapter ring. And this is clocked, so you wanna mark it before you pull it off. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry fit this, which we should have probably done in the first place. And we have an issue. There's a chance maybe there's two two hole options here. Maybe it was a clock wrong. Yep. Oh yeah, so you marked it top right here, right? Yep, so it's off. There. So good to know. This fits on the T case in two different variations, but it only fits with the studs on the transmission one way. So if we were doing another one of these, 
test fit your ring to your transfer case and then find the orientation for your mounting bolts. So learn something new today. So we had this clocked wrong, which is why we're back in the studs off. Cause when we took the plate out to clock it, realized this is aluminum. When I was installing these, I didn't feel any, you know, tension or anything against them. And then they bottomed out. You stop. Well, when we pulled the ring off, it actually, if you look in the front of this, it kind of ate out a hole in between two of the studs all the way around. And now that we clocked it differently, those holes aren't there. So it's not allowing us to close up the gap. So we got to pull them out, torque this on, and then we can snug these back up. Um, here's an old style stud puller. It works. Um, if you look here on this stud, it kind of eats into the, the bolt a little bit. That's not really a concern here because that's not going to be used. Um, but instead of destroying all the studs, I'm just using the old tried and true double nut trick. Backing these off of here. Popping them loose and moving on to the next one. So we had to reclock our ring. We got that off. We test fitted to make sure we didn't have an issue with our, our clocking ring. Turns out this will fit the transfer case in two different locations, but it'll only fit the AW4 one way. So we did end up having to reclock this and our studs worked. It would fit up there, but we wanted to stuff it up a little higher. So it was a little more flat. So we did end up pulling all our studs and reclocking those as well. So we're ready to go back in so we can try and get our arms on and keep moving forward. All right. Let's try this again. She's in. So we got a hanging top two nuts are holding it in place right now, but do yourself a favor, put it in gear before you start. So when you're trying to get it up there and wiggle it, you can just spin your rear output shaft, get your splines lined up, makes life a little easier than trying to clock the whole transfer case. So. Yeah, we're ready to get our arms attached so we can mark out our floor for our new uh, boot that's going to go in. And then we're going to see what we got to cover this thing. Oh, yeah. We even got protection for your Atlas. It's Already fun. made. 231 T case will clear an Atlas on the XJ. Oh, it's close. Well, it's pretty tight right here. It'll clear. It's a good place to start. Heck yeah. Sweet. So we've got our three link front cross member here. Atlas and the front drive shaft is gonna clear that just fine. Uh, we also kind of test fit our 231 transfer case skid plate. Um, it does get really close to one of these bolts, but the belly of it clears with probably about a half inch three quarters, so that's perfect. So we've got our 242 T case skid now. That'll for sure clear, but you'll lose just a hair of you know, belly height with it, or you can modify a 231 and make it work perfect. So now we're working inside on our actual twin sticks. The instructions aren't super helpful in this. So basically this is where our shifter linkages are gonna go for our transfer case handles. Um, we got to clearance it out. We had to peel this up a little bit to get this threaded in. We'll drop that back down, either tack it or seam seal it or something after, but I think we're gonna have to clear around this a little more because we got you know, we'll have rotation front and back on our arm. It's going to pivot on our bolts. So we're going to keep cutting away as little as we can so we can seal this up after and keep moving. So we got our hole cut. We have to cut a little more than we thought we would have to to get the clearance we needed. So looking from underneath, uh, the twin sticks are laying down right now because there's nothing tensioning them in place. But now we're going to work on our actual adjusters, which are going to hook to our twin sticks. So one bar each end is threaded so it's a threaded rod that's your adjustment so we'll get it get the transfer case back in neutral um get the twin stick straight in line with that aluminum bar that's holding it in place and then get these adjusted in once we get them snap ringed in we'll test it see if we can get it through all the gears and if we have to make adjustments pop one of these ends off and thread it in or out that feels neutrally Neutral, neutral. Should be sitting neutral, neutral about right there. Kind of hard to see, but once I get these attached, I'll show you guys a little more. So one of the biggest things that we struggled with 
uh, on the T case install was the actual double handle. Um, so we're going to show you a shot here of our finished rough product. So we had to peel the front farther forward because there's a long stud that runs all the way from here to the face of the transfer case about right here. And to get the aluminum housing on, you got to be able to kind of, I think we showed it in a previous shot, but you got to kind of come in this way and then roll it back. So we're going to end up cutting this off. I'm going to grab some sheet metal, clean this up, and then mold it in. We'll seal that, and then we'll figure out our throw for the actual handles and cut as small as hole possible to make sure it's going to clear. And then we'll slip our rubber boot over, get our center console back on later. Um, but it'll be a really clean finish and be ready to go bash on some rocks. We finally got our patch and everything on. The last shot you saw was the big old hole cut in here. We had to go a little bigger to make sure we had room to get our side pins in and whatnot. This patch looks quite a bit bigger than it needed to be. I did it in 16 gauge steel because it was it's good and rigid, but I wanted to be able to mold it a little bit too. So I ran a solid bead of silicone all the way underneath, used self tappers to kind of mold that thing in. Um, but it also gave me good points to bite with our self tappers for our seal. Missed a spot here, but I don't know if you guys have seen the floor in this thing, but we're not super concerned with water getting in here. It's a rock crawler toy, not a daily driver or something that's going mudding and bogging. So now we just got to get uh, our center console back in and keep moving forward. Well, that's going to make it better or worse. Got one, got two, got three. So we got, I don't even know what this is for to be honest, because looking at the back side, we got our locking pins and our guide pins. And then that little edge is going to sit right here. So I don't really know what that's going to be for, but we're going to take a razor blade, cut that out because we're sitting right up against the block on the other side. And it's not letting me come forward and over where we need it to be. So we're going to razor blade that out, see how it fits. Heck yeah. All right, so we ended up having to do a little more trimming than we thought we'd have to with the uh, center console, but we're going for functionality here, not looks. So it's going to work. We're still going to patch this rust hole, and then we'll get our carpet back in with the carpet tucked up in there. It'll look pretty solid, but like I said, we're going for function. This is going to be insane on the trail. So I was kind of nervous with how close the two-speed joysticks were together. Um, they are still kind of close, but they are manageable. So very rarely are they going to cross each other where you got to worry about bashing a knuckle, but we're done with our Atlas install. We've already adjusted our cables underneath. Everything's tight. Knobs are on. We can move on to the next step, which I have yet to be told is going to be that. It may be some gears. We'll find out. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to do this, let us know. We can hook you up or head up to advanced adapters and they'll get you hooked up as well. So thanks again for watching.